control. Our timekeeper, Mr. Nick White, and the referee in charge of the action this evening, one of the world and Britain's leading referees, Mr. John King from Northampton. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest is a final eliminator for the right to fight Danny Williams for the British Heavyweight Championship. This is scheduled over 12 three-minute rounds and introducing the boxers. Firstly, fighting out of Manchester, he wears the purple trunks trimmed with yellow. He weighed in at 60, so nine and a quarter pounds and had a 12 fight professional record. Eight wins, six wins by way of knockout with four losses. He's the former undefeated British and Commonwealth heavyweight champion. Please welcome to London. is about to be concluded. Julius Francis outpointed Michael Holden over 10 rounds here in July 96. They did it all over again back in Bethnal Green in March of last year. Holden enacted revenge over 12, that distance again, and the final eliminator for the British heavyweight title. Can hardly put it in comparison to a certain Bo Holyfield pre-fight series, but Jim, they did win one each, and there was a stoppage in their last meeting can either Holden or Francis make that happen here? Well, it looks like a distance fight uh, as we start the first round here. But uh, Francis is not in 12 round shape, so it depends his tactics. What does he do? Does he start quick while he's strong, get some rounds in the bank, use his experience to coast later on? Or is he thinking 12 rounds at this moment? It's Francis, who was supposed to box an eight rounder on this bill is going to be headed by Danny Williams who was to defend against Michael Holden a match that that had been called off a couple of times Holden had pulled out with a cut eye and a viral infection Williams this time pulled out with the virus last week so it's Holden Francis once more who will get the better of things this time around taller Michael Holden is Francis at his peak by far the better boxer but they've both been out of the ring for some 13 months and that's surely going to have affected both fighters yeah, well, I suppose it evens itself out they'll, they'll both maybe take a couple of rounds to, to shed the rest and get things moving and cuffing punches we're seeing in the first round here Francis attempting to get his straight jab out. He was so effective at the York Hall when he destroyed the unbeaten Pele Reed. London Ingalls hope is to come out in the Brazilian colours. Likes being the underdog, Francis. Is he here? I don't know. Well, the fact that he's taken the fight at short notice and he and he lost last time out to hold, maybe make him a slight underdog. Holden just having trouble loosening up here. Just standing off Francis. Wielding the punches. Just to get into a rhythm. It's better from Francis. He's got the speed as well 
Francis. Yeah, well, he's certainly, certainly smart. He's forcing Holden to miss here in the first round. Holden find it difficult to find a range. Francis not doing a lot of work, but maybe just like, stealing the first round. Just maybe nicked it. A, a slow first round with these two guys. Uh, difficult to separate them there. I thought maybe Francis just a little bit smarter, blocking most of Holden's attacks in his arms, as you can see here. And, uh, Flipping some nice counters and Holden won by three rounds in their British title meeting last year. 116 to 113, said Mickey Van. The three tonight, John Keane. Holden remembering the purple and yellow shorts. Francis in all black. Maybe a reminder of one Mike Tyson. He fought, of course, in January last year. Wonderful night at the MEN Arena. 21,000 fans packed in. Mr. Tyson on best behaviour for those two weeks. Right to the body from Francis. Holden trying to back him up in the corner. How can he out-muscle the bigger man? Well, I don't think he wants to out-muscle him, but I think he, he wants to think about the volume of punching. When you're in with a fellow more experienced than you, a little bit cuter than you, you don't want to throw single punches at him. So I think Holden has to raise the pace, he has to control the pace of this fight. He's the man who knew it was a 12-round fight, he's trained for a hard fight, he should be in better shape, so he should start fast and maintain the pace. And he did enough last time, but it was only 41 days after Francis Clash with Tyson, and it's not surprising that he probably wasn't really up for it. Holden has only fights the British champion. And there's eight. Unusual. Francis just taking his time. Maybe he wants to delicately tread through the opening few. He maybe wants to draw some of the steam out of Holden. I don't know if that's the best idea. But uh, Holden's stalking him. He's coming forward. But he's not really pressurising Francis. He's not making him work. And uh, nothing that he's done has given Francis any problems. Yeah, he's still quite cool and calm. Everything under control there. Because he's not thrown enough, Holden. Francis is picking him off and using the experience in all those 30 fights to take it at his own pace. Holden's got to disrupt that. I mean, the final points of the game, not Holden's strong point, he has to use his strength, his fitness. A little bit younger, he just has to get fired up and force the pace here. Yes, but he's not at the moment. It's 2-0 to Francis. Trainer Bob Shannon with Michael Holden. There was Dean Powell when he won the British title over Julius Francis, but he's gone back up north. See, that's the problem for Holden. He's just not landing cleanly. The quality, not really of the highest order as yet. Hopefully things will warm up. Here's the third round. The left of your screens, the 33-year-old Michael Holden in the purple and yellow from ashton under -Line in Manchester against local favourite Woolwich's Julius Francis. 21 wins, 9 defeats. But if he loses again tonight, he says, that's it. I'm retiring, and Frank Maloney, manager, as Michael Holden throws in a very good left hook, which had some effect, has read the right act to both of them. Neither can afford to lose. Holden was encouraged by that. And this is what Holden must do. He must pressurise. Look at just stalking an experienced guy like Francis. He doesn't want to waste energy, but he needs to set a pace, control pressure, just keep raising the pace and stay in there. Forget the single shot. Almost certainly got a better chin, Holden, 
and finer punch resistance. Francis has been down in six of his fights, albeit at a higher level than Holden has been used to. See, Holden doesn't want to stand off against Francis. That little burst we saw in the ropes, we need some more of that. Has to set a pace control the pace of this fight. He'll be outboxed if he stands at long range. He's really got a pressure, Francis. He has to draw him into a battle. I mean, you have to expect him to be in better shape. As he said a couple of seconds ago, he has a good chin so he can take some chances. Although that was a decent right hand, I don't want to take too many of those. A couple going in from Julius Francis. He's coming back, a smile on the face of Michael Holden. They've sparred hundreds of rounds together. They've known each other in and out of the ring. In fact, Holden was even Francis's bodyguard for the Tyson experience. Holden coming forward again, trying to build on the earlier success he had. That's a nice jab. A bit more commitment from Holden. Now he's stepping in with the punch. He's getting that little bit closer. That's what he must do. Can't stand at long range. An old war horse like Francis. Yes, and Francis with a wild response. Not the controlled look he's had in the opening couple of sessions. Holden needs to keep the pace up and continue working. is missing now from Francis. It's been a better round for the Manchester fighter. A little turn in the tide. There is team Shannon, Denny Mancini there with Michael Holden. Go to your right now. Go to your right. And remember, he caught you with a few rights there. Go to your right, he's saying. I wouldn't worry too much about the finer points of the game, especially handling a big fellow like Holden. I think the main thing is that he sets the pace and commits himself a bit more, and he certainly did it in the third round there. OK, he did take a couple of counters back. That was a good right hand. He took another right hand just after this one, but took them well, which proves he can afford to take some chances. Well, three and four in the British heavyweight rankings. Of course, Lennox Lewis, number one. No doubt about that. Danny Williams, the current British and Commonwealth champion, will meet the winner of this. Mark Potter, who came so close to beating Williams, that one arm win he had. Plenty of other talent, although most have lost one or two along the way. Join us in the fourth round now. Julius Francis and Michael Holden meeting for the third time, and surely the final encounter between these two. Francis with the boxing advantage early on, Holden coming on stronger in the last round and looking to bully Francis and really test the Woolwich fighter's stamina because that could be a question mark and the other thing you've got to ask Jim is how much does Julius Francis want this now he's been in with Tyson he's had a, a decent career he's got things outside of the sport that might come into play the more this goes on well he's never lacked pride in his work uh, Julius I'll say that for him so I think he, and if he took the job he must fancy the job and he's actually he's boxing a smart fight here boxing a smart fight he hasn't really come out his shell too much but he's defensively very good and I think he's just trying to burn a bit of the steam out of Holden before he gets to work himself absolutely he's trying to make Holden work much more than he has to an old trick which he did pretty effectively against Danny Williams when he was the underdog remember just a few days now to go to the big clash in Vegas Prince Nassim Hamad and Marco Antonio Barrera huge night on Saturday biggest of the year and the big men in the ring back at domestic level but fighting for pride and the future and as far as Holden goes for some money can't even afford a car apparently 
Holden standing off again. He, he was setting the pace in the previous round, but he's uh, settled back down again. For me, it's not the best plan. The eye has held up of Michael Holden. He was cut in their last meeting. Be careful of those heads rubbing right. together. Step back. And cut in sparring very soon afterwards. The left eye needed plenty of stitches and kept him out the ring and out of the finances for a while. Francis began to wrestle up close, again taking some of the steam out of Holden. That's the old pro tricks. Just ducking there and Holden looking very amateurish with a big left over the top. Expression hasn't changed on the face of Julius Francis. He tries to move forward. And Holden opens up at the end of the fourth, but that's another round for Francis, surely. The number four heavyweight in Britain on the left of your screen is the third on the right. Who's having the better of this? Well, Julius Francis has thrown and landed more on the computer, but Holden, the more conservative success rate. Julius seems more in control though. Yeah, I think he'll be quite happy. He'll be happy with the pace the fight's been caught at and the fact that Holden hasn't done anything that he can't cope with. Hasn't knocked him out of his stride, hasn't done anything clever. Everything Holden's done been pretty straightforward and uh, Francis will be happy with that. Now this is how Jim has it. Two up to Francis. As both men open up here in the fifth. Holden really slamming home the hooks. Francis covering up on the ropes. Right to the body, which was covered well. And back to the jab for Julius Francis. The fifth round in which he had one of his best wins ever, knocking out big bad James Oyabola for the Southern Area heavyweight title. He's got to watch the bombardment from Holden. Francis was very sound defensively then. That's exactly what he was like against Danny Williams. He covered up so well, didn't he? And he moved forward only when he had to, picking up the points. Yeah, a lot of that was out of the fact that Williams didn't seem to believe in himself that night either. A combination of both is a poor performance from Williams. So Francis really at boxing well tonight, keeping everything under control, not exerting himself at any time. The slowly but surely safety first method from Francis who looks untroubled and very cool some puffiness to the lip of Holden eating up the Francis jab you just see the Holden is just a little bit too straightforward nothing clever, nothing smart so France is quite happy to keep things going the way they are going. Good left-right combination from Francis, who has campaigned at a far higher level. Holden there complaining about heads getting too close. I don't know if he was complaining or apologising, believe it or not. I think there might be a little bit of damage just inside the left eye of Michael Holden. That just did come from... Heads rubbing, it's right inside it, it's nothing major yet. So Francis keeping the target tucked up nicely, Holden can't find a way through in this round. The uppercut on the inside, even when they get close from Francis. Holden out of range and out of sorts, even the bandage on his gloves starting to come loose. He's not shipping enough of these punches. It's all Francis. Even before Nazim's night of judgment on Saturday night, we have four big title fights from Wembley for you, headed by Newton Villarreal against Billy Schwer, light welterweight. That's all in the build-up to Nazim yes. against Barrera. Special event on Sky Box office this Saturday night. 08 705 800 888 is the number to call. Yes, Paul, Billy Schwer, who made his debut in this very ring, 
and enjoyed some of his finest European success at lightweight. How will he fare going up? Another interesting fight on the card. Steve Roberts, Keith Mullings, Adrian Dodson also on display Saturday night in the build-up to the big one. The two heavyweights here fighting for a place in the future of the British division. A big notch down from the likes of Lennox Lewis. But Michael Holden is struggling to come to terms with the superior boxing knowledge of Julius Francis. He's fighting like an old pro who just knows too much. That's exactly what it's like. He's treating this a little bit at the moment like a gym workout. He's just controlling the pace, conserving energy. Holden's just been uh, had a little ticket off for slapping. He is uh, swinging his plunges a little bit wildly at times. So Francis will be delighted the way things are going. And all those rounds in the gym, which Mark Rowe was telling me Julius got far the better of. So he knows he can do this. I mean, he beat Holden first time around and by his own admission just threw it away. Not being motivated enough. Plenty there, Francis. Back to the jab. As Holden opens up, Francis comes back with superior work. He's unsure how to fight Francis tonight, Holden. He's still trying single shots, and against a guy with Francis' experience, you're never going to have any success with that. He has to raise the tempo, let the punches flow, and I have to admit, Francis looks in better shape than I expected him to be in. As he's come in 17, 13 and 3 quarters, he put on five and a half pounds after the Tyson fight when he last fought Holden. He's so poor that night, lacklustre, but on paper, he should win this every time. He's operated in a far higher level, going in with the likes of Zielko Mavrovic for the European title. And even Johnny Ruiz, who recently beat Holyfield and hopefully ended the Warriors' career by winning the WBA title out in Las Vegas. Holden hasn't been in with anyone, really. He's keeping this round a little bit closer, Holden. He's pressurising a bit more. This is what he must do. He must raise the pace, try to get, get a grip of the action here. He's been beaten to the jab. And Francis looks the more comfortable inside the squared circle. Well, for me, Julius Francis is boxing exceptionally well. Let's see how Johnny Nelson, the world cruiserweight champion, has it back in the studio. I see Julius, uh, he's, he's taking his time, he's, he's just jabbing and just using the jab. And, uh, Holden needs to close down the gap, keep the pressure on him and take him out of his stride. At this moment in time, Julius Francis is an old man in him and he's been able to jab and relax. Uh, and obviously he's a better technical fighter and he's taken it away from him. Absolutely, Johnny. I think you agree with that. Exactly, Jim. Yep, he's just, as I said earlier, he's just treating like a gymnasium workout, controlling the pace, controlling the action. Maybe a little bit, they have sparred together, as you were saying. Maybe Julius has uh, flipped into that mould. He's finding it's working, so he's sticking with it. He just, he's always a little step ahead of Michael Holden. A little clash of heads then. And, uh, Holden did have some success the previous round, but uh, the clever work again came from Francis. Second half of this final eliminator for the British heavyweight title. The winner to tackle Brixton's talented... Danny Williams, the loser, well, if it's Francis, nowhere to go, if it's Holden, maybe he has something left, there's Jim, scarred four rounds ahead, Frank Maloney, interestingly enough, at ringside, who is manager of both of these men, has Francis two ahead. Again, Francis there looked unhappy with something. But just out the pressure again. I think the whole realizes this corner must realize it has to come up with something better. He must raise the pace, draw Francis into a fight. Boxing match, long range boxing match is no good to hold, he has to draw him into a war. He hasn't drawn Francis in yet, but remember that 
the South London boxer did not think he'd be fighting 12 rounds in this arena tonight. It was to be a warm-up for a shot at the British title down the road. Holden knew he would be. Well, we're getting towards the stage when you would expect Holden to have a little bit more in the tank, so he must prove that, must raise the pace, start getting a grip of this fight. He's certainly improved, he's what's improved a little bit in the beginning of the seventh round here. Francis just winks to a friend, I think, down at ringside, as though he has things totally under control. He's certainly boxing far better than last time, although Holden with a right hook just rises apart the guard of Julius Francis. He nods there, and this is better from the Manchester boy. I think the time has come when Holden has to dent Francis's confidence. Things have been going well. Francis is happy. He's worked at his own pace, doing what he likes. Holden has to put an end to that. Doesn't get too cocksure, too overconfident that things are going exactly according to plan. Julius Francis has to commit himself a bit more to Holden. He's trying to box his way in. It hasn't worked so far. He's going to have to take some chances, put punches together, just jump on top of Francis, draw him into a fight. Close that distance down and. A little bit less coming from Francis now, which might encourage the Holden camp. Just backing off into those ropes. That was a phase when he fought Williams, Francis. He just went to sleep for a couple of rounds. It's a big, big night, this for him. He can't afford to do that. But Holden, big improvement in Holden's work. And at this stage in the fight, this could be significant. That's Holden's round. A tap on the back from Julius Francis, old friend, enemy in there tonight, and there's some blood there to the right, just above the right eyebrow, I think, of Holden. It was the left that cut last time. Well, that's what uh, Holden has to do. He has to raise the pace. He has to commit himself a little bit more and stop falling into the traps that Francis is laying. Francis will the old the warriors mentality is controlling the pace keeping it nice and steady Holden has to put a, a stop to that deep breaths from Michael Holden <laughs> is the pace getting to him he hasn't fought as well for 13 months and in the crowd well Audley Harrison to make his professional debut very, very soon. He says he can beat Danny Williams within five fights. I know Williams is furious about that. He's the British champion, and he intends to stay there after his miraculous win with one arm last time. Again, Francis complains here. It was a bad clash of heads, but it was not intentional. I think Holden just flew off the stool with mean intentions. It was not an intentional, but it was his fault. I see some blood coming down again from that little nick. Over eagerness there from Holden and the tape as well. I know this was loose a couple of rounds ago. There's back in corner and over in the other corner. Frank Maloney is talking to Julius Francis as they come back out. There's that hook from Francis, who's caught Holden. Just he comes out and Holden grimaces and fires a couple of words underneath that gum shield back to Francis. Oh, we need a bit of excitement, don't we? Well, it's a, it's, it's a far, far better fight than the, the previous two fights. And this is more like it, they're both a bit more business-like. Big improvement from Holden here. And that blood trickling from the right eye, and it's inside it. That could prove very problematic. He just dabs at that away. Holden, who's had that tendency to cut before. And the sight of blood. They fire Francis up. And get his career back on track at the ripe old age of 36. Well, the two of them want this in there. And as Jim said, a much better fight than either of the last two. Holden is dr he's drawing him into a war now. This is what he has to do. Francis is a smooth operator, the cute one. Holden a little bit crude by comparison, so he has to draw him into his kind of battle. 
That's exactly what Michael Murray did. Another Manchester fighter that's got a win over Julius Francis. It was a 10-round verdict back in February 96. And he just got Francis out of his rhythm. Hustle and bustle of Holden. Holden's raised the pace, Adam, and it's working. Francis not looking quite so comfortable in there now. Francis slowing down. The deterioration, he just staggers back there. And is this... Well, taking the 12-round fight at just a few days' notice, starting to catch up with Francis. He turned professional till 28, so not extremely old at 36 for a heavyweight. Holden, the fresher man. He may just want it a bit more, Holden. Well, this is the stage in the fight where he must feel he's stronger, he's better prepared than Francis, so he has to raise the pace, and full credit, he's trying to do that. He's coming right back into it. The boxer who starred in Coronation Street 2. He's got that on his record, but he'd like his British title back a bit more than any more credits on soap opera. Is Danny Mancini there working on the eye? Just just on the forehead, just on the forehead eyebrow. Type of deep slit there. There's a problem because the, the blood is rolling inside the nose and into the eye. Was that the clash? Yeah, but and uh, if you had to blame anyone for that clash, you have to blame Holden. But he, he came off the, the stool fired up. And the heads banged together, but back comes Francis. Another tough round, so we have to wonder who it will be coping with this pace. <laughs> Holden on, here, who knew it was a 12, he was preparing for a 12 rounder, or Francis preparing for an 8 rounder. He's much quicker off his stool, Holden. And Francis has got to get things moving again. <laughs> well, the Francis corner. I've said to him, be more aggressive, stop being so nice to Holden. <laughs> they are great pals. He's had his rhythm broken. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, that, that should have been the first plan of Holden right from the off. <laughs> you can't throw single punches. A cute old performer like Francis and allow him to control the pace. Holden, whose biggest win before Francis was probably a 14-second blast out of the Belsize Park heavyweight Israel of Josie. He's come up the hard way, beating Derek McCafferty, lost to Harry Senior here on points. His biggest night against Julius Francis. Can he come on strong late? He may be a couple of rounds behind on John Keane's scorecard. Good left hook from Francis. A nice little purple patch again here from Francis. He's got his act together again. Jim, that's exactly what he did against Danny Williams. He was just lethargic for two or three of those middle rounds, and he finished strongly. I mean, he has been the 12-round distance five times. Nice jab from Francis then, too. See Holden standing off again, trading long punches. Didn't work in the early part of the fight. I don't know why he's doing it now. Now Tate coming loose from the right glove of Michael Holden as the jab goes back into play from Francis. The boxing weapon, which he uses very well for a big guy. At his Indian summer when stopping Pele Reid here, beating Danny Williams, and then beating Scott Welsh. And he's come back to show Michael Holden that maybe after Lennox Lewis, he's still the best in Britain. Backs off there, Francis. I think there's another clash which I don't think he liked. But he's got his act back together again. Some lovely boxing in this round from Francis. Well, it's good use 
of his skills, Francis. And that's Holden up, and he's not let him get inside. That long jab. Excellent work from Julius Francis. Well, while these two heavy men battle it out, the little guys in Vegas come Saturday night. It's going to be an absolute cracker, according to Nassim Hamad. A very exciting fight. Plenty of drama. They're calling it playing with fire, by the way. Playing with fire. I like that. Because it's... Who's going to doubt who's fire first and make it stay out? Because I can't see him doubting my fire. I'm going to be hot that night. I'm going to be sizzling. I'm talking about... I'm going to be taking him out. I mean, there's no doubt about it that I'm going to be confident, unbelievably confident, fit, ready. Um, and I just can't wait to hit him with his power. Strong words again from the Prince. And he really is confident about this one. He thinks Barrera is made for him. Nine minutes to go here. Julius Francis surely ahead in the black trunks from Woolwich. Last hurrah, maybe, 36 years of age. Michael Holden with it all to do in the purple. And this is how Jim has got things three up to Francis. So Holden needs to win every single round on your card. I think the problem for Holden is throwing from long range again. He's not controlling the pace. So we're back into the, the type of fight we had earlier with Francis. Everything under control. Just stealing the punches. He's backing off and boxing again just as he wants to. Julius Francis. Holden must force Francis back into a corner. Unload leather. Francis has hardly made use of his right hand at all, which is surprising. I wonder if there's a problem there. I don't remember the last time he threw a decent right hand punch in this fight. He did very early on, but he's keeping it just tucked in and he's boxing off the jab. And that's what Danny Williams had to do when he fought Mark Potter. That was the shoulder that went. A remarkable uppercut that floored Potter with his left. And it's Francis fighting one armed as well. He's thrown a couple of body shots recently, but he's not using the right hand. Maybe he's quite happy just fucking away with the jab. Now, that was a solid right, thankfully. Very good shot, that one. Maybe he's just kidding Holden in so he can counter over the top. Holden forcing his way forward. I think this performance goes to show that Julius Francis must really have been off that night in March last year, totally under-motivated. I think to come from the Mike Tyson stage all the way down to, to boxing, Michael Hold, no, no offence meant to Michael Hold, but what a drop that is. I'm not surprised he couldn't motivate himself. Absolutely. From... He must have had a fraction of the money as well, Adam. <laughs> from fighting one of the best heavyweights of modern times to his own bodyguard. Quite different. It was fun those two weeks. Julius absolutely loved it. Loved all the attention. Went down five times to Iron Mike. Kept getting up. And he was uh, out partying later, and why not? <laughs> now, Julius Francis may be pulling ahead now. Two two old two trainer two Mark Rowe in the corner, been with him for years. He took a 15 hour train journey to Russia. The train was full of cockroaches. They've been everywhere together. All 20 thrown. But look how many more landed by Julius Francis. Quality shots, boxing beautifully. Yeah, we're seeing some lovely defensive boxing from Francis, and unfortunately for Michael Horn, he doesn't have enough idea of the game. 
to break him down, to give him some problems. He's a little bit crude, and uh, Francis is beginning to expose that a little bit. But 10 out of 10 for Effa from Holden. But uh, on my card, he's struggling. Well, this is the 211th round of Julius Francis' career, and only the 67th of Michael Holden's. And it's all the experience and know-how, and even sparring with Lennox Lewis, Julius, fighting the likes of Axel Schultz and Vitaly Klitschko, despite the fact he didn't last long, have stood him in very good condition to deal with a fairly average former British heavyweight champion. I think Francis's tactics have been spot on. He's allowed Holden to hit fresh air for the first half of the fight, just kept in a little shell, just did enough to nick right. the rounds early without exerting himself too much. So uh, strength-wise, he's probably brought Holden down to his level. Now he's using his, his skill and his experience. Francis, who was sparring with Faisal Mohamed at the TKO gym. A Christian, just like Holden, very religious, both men in there. Plenty of them are in Britain at the moment. Danny Williams. Mark Potter, of course, the banner over for worldwide. And Holden now starting to show distress signals. The hands are down. Francis working well. Big shots to the head now from Julius Francis. I think we saw some signs of frustration there from Holden. He's just throwing caution to the wind, just barging in without a defence and a thought in his head. And he paid the penalty for that. Just being caught. And the legs are starting to go as well of Michael Holden. Will Francis just box out the 12? Or will he try and force the stoppage? more energy. That's actually a little bit scrappy in this round. I okay, feel a little wonder, it's been a fair old pace all the way through, both feeling that pace. I feel the box will be coming scrappy, as I say. It was this sort of fight last time and the time before. And I'm happy to say that the third encounter has been more intriguing. Well, have given Julius Francis a lifeline and a career back. Holden again, lacking ideas and very, very angry with himself as he trundles back to his corner. Julius there looks so relaxed and happy. It doesn't matter now, it's one more round. All right, it doesn't matter now. The extra know how and boxing. Skills. Well, as that's been the story all the way through. In 10 out of 10 for effort from Holden, but he uh, was just never, couldn't match Francis, certainly experience of the technique department, and, and he really didn't force the pace enough in the earlier rounds. Didn't drag Francis into the fight, I feel he should have done. Come on, Fred. I'll mark that. Come on, Fred. 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 Well, the distressed look on the right of your screens because see how many punches have been landed. 157 man for Francis. Holden really needs a knockout in the final three minutes. Uh, Michael Holden may have been up for Danny Williams and it could have been a slight letdown that he had Julius Francis in front of him. But every boxer must be professional and that is exactly what the Woolwich heavyweight has done tonight. He's coming at short notice, and he has given his former friend, sparring partner, Polly, a boxing lesson. He's got to just throw everything to it now, Holden. Yep, needs a knockout. No, no signs that he's going to achieve that, but he has to go for that. Certainly on my card, the referee may have it tight, but I don't know. But he needs a knockout. 
as Jim's card. He has Francis four up. I've got Francis five up. The only one that matches is John Keane. How will the final eliminator for the British heavyweight title go? Who will be facing Danny Williams? Will it be Francis Williams two? Or will it be Holden Williams one? Again, solid jab. And a look about Julius Francis, who has methodically, professionally, and calculatedly done this the right way. He's treated it just like an advanced sparring session, and that's been the way. That's exactly right. He's used his experience and his know-how just to keep everything that Holden was trying to do under control. Well, Francis' last big win was back in June 99, when he defended the British title against Scott Welsh, who formerly had knocked Francis down four times and out in a Southern Area match. Revenge was sweet that night, I know, for Francis, but I think it's going to be even sweeter tonight. He's proved that he still has a part to play in British heavyweight boxing. And Holden can find no way through. Needs one big haymaker, but with only six knockouts on the record. It's going to happen, and the crowd are now getting behind Francis. They see another great night in the up and down roller coaster career of Julius Francis. Well, his defensive boxing tonight has been a joy to watch, Francis. And he's just taken everything, the holding it through arm, kept under control, and come back with better punches of his own. He's been out of his level a few times, Julius Francis, but he's back. British title dream is on for Julius Francis once more. He boxed very, very well tonight. A hug for Michael Holden. The final eliminator is won by Woolwich's Julius Francis. It will be a return match with Danny Williams, and look how happy he is. He's proved everybody wrong again. Well, he's taken his chance, he's made the best of it, he's been in good shape. It just shows well, most fighters when they go to the gymnasium, they get themselves as fit as they can do, they don't think of eight rounds or 12 rounds. They train every time they go to the gymnasium, they train as hard as they can do, and Julius has reaped the benefits of that. He was, he was in tremendous shape, maybe he could have been slightly better shape, but he did the job perfectly. Michael Holden was very tough and very brave, but Julius Francis has a delightful night. I'm back, he says. I'm back at 36. He's back. And you have to love him, Julius, because he's a fascinating character for the sport. Well, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of 12 very hard fought rounds, the referee scorecard reads Michael Holden, 112 points. Julius Francis, 116 points. The winner, Julius Francis! Francis, the winner by four rounds. And a British title shot once more. Proved he was a superior man in there. And I'm sure Holden will have a drink with him later. Back, and he looks on that evidence like there's plenty more in the tank. Let's hear, let's hear now how he sees his future from here. Nigel. Julius, at just a few days' notice, you go in and give Michael Holden, who you lost to in this very ring, a boxing lesson. Yeah, yeah, um, you know what, it's, it was hard work, it was very hard work. But first off, let me give thanks to um, the Almighty Father, Jesus Christ, for giving me the strength again. You know what, Michael Holden gave me, it was a great fight, it was a tough battle, I knew it was going to be hard. Um, but you hadn't prepared for 12 I, rounds and you no, went to really very well. I hadn't really for 12 rounds, but you know what, when I, when I work and when I train, I trained for any kind of circumstance. And it was tough. I knew Michael was going to come out strong, hard. He's a determined guy, you know what I'm saying? So, How upset and embarrassed were you last time about your performance against Holden? And how much what? did you want to right that wrong? I couldn't really say I was embarrassed. Um, it was just 
um, really, in hindsight, we shouldn't have taken the fight. You know, um, I never really was prepared. Um, you know, and I, all fair play to Michael Holden. He's a, he's a tough, the guy's tough. He took some great shots in there, you know what I'm saying? So, give it, you've got to give him respect, you know what I'm saying? But Danny Williams, it's me and you now. So, you know what, I'm coming back. I want my titles back.